I still can't get over how huge this 3D printer is. This is the brand new Elegoo Neptune 3 Max, and it just barely, and I mean just barely, fits on my workbench here. This thing is just a beast of a 3D printer that we're gonna be taking a look at in today's video, and I'm gonna be showing off some of the massive things that you can print with this 3D printer. And what's even crazier than the build volume of this 3D printer is the price point coming in at $470, just under 500 bucks for a massive 420 by 420 by 500 millimeter tall build volume 3D printer. This thing is absolutely epic for anybody looking to do massive 3D prints. This printer is so large that I'm having a hard time finding optimal angles just to actually record anything with it to actually get the printer in frame here on screen along with me so I can tell you all about this thing. So let me first start off by saying the box came very well packaged for such a large printer of this size. It weighs about 48 pounds total, at least what's that's what it said on the, the shipping manifest there. And I believe it weighs just about that, about 50 pounds for you to be able to pick this up and lug it around or use it as you know some curling irons there. However, one additional thing that I've seen on this printer that I've never seen on any other machine or one that comes from Elegoo specifically is that this has had some 3D printed uh, little cubes here to, I believe, hold the wheels in place underneath the bed here. So nothing bends or bows during shipping, which is kind of cool. So I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna end up doing with these, but they're really nice 3D prints. And more than likely, maybe I'll try and melt them down into something cool. And just how large is the Neptune 3 Max? Well, here's the Elegoo Neptune 3 Pro sitting on the build volume of this 3D printer and the overall build volume for the Neptune 3 Max exceeds what the entire build dimensions are of the Neptune 3 Pro, which is just crazy impressive to see such a huge Neptune 3D printer. And, and, oh, oh my gosh, I'm getting a workout from all this. This is the Neptune 3 Plus compared to the Neptune 3 Max, which again is really large and is gonna be perfect for things like printing 3D printable helmets and other cosplay pieces, but if you wanna go super sized with your 3D prints, then the Max is definitely gonna be the way to go. So let's talk about how large this machine actually is. So as I mentioned, the build volume for this 3D printer is 420 by 420 by 500 millimeters high. The height of this 3D printer measures 37 and a half inches tall if you include a spool on top, which I'm assuming most of you are gonna be using when you're 3D printing. With the bed extended all the way to the back, it comes in at 33 inches long if you measure from the front of the machine all the way to the back again with that bed extended. Then if you extend the bed all the way forward, it comes in at 31 inches measuring from the back of the printer all the way to the very front. And then you're gonna be looking at a total front and back length measurement of extending the bed forward and back to a total of 40 inches long. This thing takes up a significant amount of space and I've so far, the biggest challenge that I've had with the printer isn't getting things to 3D print, it's actually having space for it somewhere in my studio. It doesn't fit properly on one of my printer racks there. So I end up having it sitting on the ground currently. And what I think I'm gonna end up doing is clearing off a lower rack and just having it sit on the very bottom on the ground of my studio so that it has enough space to move forward and backwards freely while it's printing. Now this printer does have an almost identical feature set to the Elgu Neptune 3 Plus, which is just slightly larger or significantly larger than the Neptune 3 Plus. So we're looking at a direct drive extruder with dual mounted fans on the side of that extruder to help keep things cool while you're 3D printing. That direct drive extruder is also great for printing flexible materials. I haven't tried printing with TPU yet just on this machine, but I did have really good success with printing TPU over on my Neptune 3 Pro. And since it's such a large 3D printer, I'm honestly kind of impressed with how quiet it is compared to the other large 3D printers that I've used in the past. This isn't as quiet as the Neptune 3 Pro, but it's probably on par with the Neptune 3 Plus. The Max also comes with the same magnetic control plate that you're gonna find over on the Neptune 3 Plus, and the interface is pretty much identical to what you're gonna find on the Neptune 3 Plus. This is also sporting a huge, and I mean absolutely huge, magnetic metal PEI textured print bed sheet here. 
that's really fun to play with. And just for a comparison, here's the Max build plate. Here is the Neptune 3 Plus's build plate. And the Neptune 3 Pro's build plate just looks comically small next to the Max. There's so much room to print things on this machine. And since this has such a large build volume and build plate, it does have the same mechanism that we saw on the Neptune 3 Plus, which includes the six wheels on the bottom side of your build plate there for manual leveling before you go through the process of doing the auto mesh bed leveling. This way, if you have one area that's not quite perfectly dialed in, you can use the manual dials to help hone those in. The other thing that I'm extremely impressed with is the heat up time for this massive bed on the Max compared to some of the other really large 3D printers that I'm familiar with working with here. This only takes a handful of minutes to fully heat up to 60 degrees so I can run off and print with PLA versus the 15 plus minutes that I'm used to seeing on some of the other machines that are out there. Oh, and this thing is also sporting the light bar that we've seen on the Pro and the Plus. And one additional thing that's not available on the Pro or the Plus is that this has a drawer on the bed of the 3D printer so that you can store all of your parts and tools for this machine. That I find really handy and I wish was on all of the other Neptune printers. Also, the touchscreen interface is fairly responsive and I'm loving the fact that it, again, has the ability to have those preset controls for you to preheat the machine to whatever material that you're gonna be working with. You also have the ability to very easily load and unload filament, unlike some other machines that I've recently taken a look at. So let's check out some of the things that I printed on this huge 3D printer. And the first thing that I went off and printed was a Benchy in one hour and 33 minutes with some of Elegoo's blue PLA. This turned out pretty dang smoothly here and looks very nice here on the Max. And one thing to note, this is the only print that I have run off and printed with the standard 0.4 millimeter nozzle because this is such a huge 3D printer. Honestly, you're better off printing with something like a 0.6 millimeter nozzle or even potentially trying a 0.8 millimeter nozzle. I'll get into that. I didn't have the best luck with a 0.8, but a 0.6 for sure with a printer of this size or of something like the Plus is just beautiful. And honestly, I wish Elegoo would include that as the default nozzle size for these larger 3D printers. Now, this wouldn't be an Elegoo Neptune 3D printer video if I didn't run off and print an Eastman bust file. And if you didn't know, I think I printed an Eastman bust file with every single one of my Neptune 3 videos that I've run off and shown off as an initial video here. This is the Lobo bust from Eastman. This took, I think, 14 and a half hours with a 0.6 millimeter nozzle and just looks fantastic. Printed at 0.2 millimeter layer height. Yeah, honestly, this is just stunning. This is the kind of quality that I was hoping to get out of such a large 3D printer like the Max. Thank you, Elegoo, for making this massive 3D printer. I'm extremely excited about all the cosplay potential projects that I can print with this machine. This next one is a red hood helmet from Villainous Props that I had been itching to print, and I originally wanted to print this on the Neptune 3 Plus. However, it didn't fit perfectly on that machine. It's just ever so slightly too large for that. I mean, technically it would fit if I like printed it sideways or at an angle, but I really wanted to test out printing a helmet, a rather large helmet here on the Max, and I'm happy to say that it's a snug fit and fits properly on my head. It was a 44 hour print, again, with that 0.6 millimeter nozzle at 0.2 layer height, and the results are beautiful. The one issue that I have is there is a small seam towards the bottom where I ended up going into the controls of the printer and bumped up the print speed by 10%. I wanted to see what would happen. And I foolishly did that with this particular helmet file and I wish I didn't because, I mean, I'm honestly probably gonna be the only one that notices that little tiny seam there on the side. But other than that, it's like perfect, absolutely perfect. And before running off and printing some really large files, I wanted to print this little Oni face mask from Black Gorilla Armory. This was a quick, I think nine hour print with that 0.6 millimeter nozzle. Again, at 0.2 layer height, I am seeing a little bit of, I think it looked like a partial clog there. And I believe it's from the particular filament that I was using. I've not seen this on any of the other prints that I've been printing with in today's video. Now take a look at this awesome piece of art that I've printed here across not only the Max, but I ended up using the Plus and the Neptune 3 Pro for this particular project. I ended up printing the largest piece of this. This is all scaled up by 200% here on the Max. It's the only printer that I have that would actually fit this particular piece. 
I printed the splash piece that's on the bottom on the Neptune 3 Plus and then the cup on the Neptune 3 Pro. Everything was printed, I believe, at 0.2 millimeter layer height, again with that 0.6 millimeter nozzle. The splash part took the longest out of everything. And then the pouring piece, I believe, was like a five hour print here on the Max. This thing is just awesome and so excited to have this here in the studio. I can't recommend printing one of these enough. This is just a such a cool 3D print. So here's where things got a little bit complicated. I upgraded the nozzle to a 0.8 millimeter nozzle and I've never worked with that on any 3D printer. And I assumed because it's gonna be larger that I actually be able to print faster just by heating up the nozzle and my prints a little bit hotter than what I normally print with. Unfortunately, it was like the exact opposite. I ran to fail after fail after fail trying to print my logo at a larger size and this Doom armor piece that I'll talk about here in just a minute. So what I ended up doing was I ended up being able to print this particular logo, my logo here, by just basically slowing everything way down to about 50 millimeters per second and then again bumping up the temperature to I think it was about 230. 30 for the PLA. This ended up printing fairly well. However, again, I just need to play around with the 0.8 millimeter nozzle a little bit more before I'm more comfortable with, again, putting it back on here and running much larger prints. So what I ended up doing was putting the six millimeter nozzle or the 0.6 millimeter nozzle back on this machine and then running off and printing this lower ab piece for this armor set. Now check out this huge piece of armor. This is a chest piece for a Doom armor set that the lower abs and the top portion here are gonna go together. I ended up, this was just way too large to fit on any machine other than the Max here. So this basically came close to maxing out the entire vertical build volume for this 3D printer. This again was printed with that 0.6 millimeter nozzle and just looks so good. I think I ended up printing this at 0.28 millimeter layer height. I honestly wish I would have spent the extra time, the extra print time, and just printing that at 0.2. This still looks really good at 0.28, but there is a little bit of uh, more visible layer lines that I'm gonna see with this, but it should be relatively easy enough for me to sand down and sand smooth for this armor set. And yeah, it was already scaled down to 95% scale to better fit my body here. Now I just need to go off and print the back piece so that I can get these two things secured together. Or maybe I'm gonna slap it on the naked mannequin back there so he finally has some clothes to wear. I did wanna take a moment to say a big huge thank you to Elegoo for sponsoring today's video and sending along the Neptune 3 Max for me to show off to everyone here over on the interwebs. This thing is an absolute beast of a 3D printer and if you're interested in more information on it, you can find links to this along with the Neptune 3 Plus and the Neptune 3 Pro over on Elegoo's website. I believe the Max and the Pro are currently out of stock, but hopefully, fingers crossed, those are back in stock soon. I know those things went quick once they were initially available for pre-order here just the other week. I also have some links to the Amazon listings down below as soon as they're available. But let me know down below what you think about the Neptune 3 Max. This thing is just a beast of a huge 3D printer and at $470, this is such a deal in my mind for a machine of this size that can print some absolutely amazing things. You're definitely gonna be seeing some larger projects coming from me here in the future off of this machine. I also wanna take a minute to say a huge thank you to all my Patreon supporters for your continued support of me making videos here on YouTube. If you're interested in information on my 3D printer settings, including the settings that I'm using here for the Neptune 3 Max, you can find those over in my Patreon. Hey, thanks so much for watching all. Hopefully you enjoyed and I'll see you next time. By now. I honestly can't wait to start printing this massive project that I've been wanting to do for the past year for the studio here. So you'll definitely be seeing more of that here in the upcoming weeks. I might end up breaking that up into a whole bunch of smaller videos for that massive print project.